Uh, you guys ever just see a headline and you're like, come on, like really? You're going to do my Wednesday like that. You're going to see this thing that seems like really exciting and then it's just complete clickbait. Or like, I don't know, my parents, which I'm working, we're, we're working through this together. My parents see these things that they think are stories on the bottom of websites. It's like 25 celebs who gained 400 pounds in a month. And you're like, you know, and then you click on it and you know, like th those kind of things. I don't know. I don't click on those, but some people do. But today I saw one of those, not even a story yet. It was just a, a Geekbench result. Um, basically a, a processor stress test. The, the single core score is 1687 for the new M1 inside of the MacBook Air and the multi-core score is 7433. Now, maybe you're like me and you're like, I have absolutely no idea what that means with zero context. What, what is 1687? What, what in the world does that mean? You know, because that's what I was thinking. So like any person that has n no idea what that means, I was like, let me look up some context. I started working on a story uh, about this and I was like, all right, let's check out. You know, this is literally what I went to first just on my own because I was curious because it's, it's the laptop that I have. I was like specced out eight core 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now keep in mind, I'm comparing this against the new M1 13 inch MacBook Air that doesn't have a fan doesn't even have a fan on the inside of this computer. And I'm like, let's compare it to my triple fan, quad speaker, MacBook Pro. And it was fully better. I'm not joking. Uh, the single core score and the multi-core score were both higher um, by a pretty decent margin. Um, that's weird, right? That's a little odd. Huh. And then I said to myself, huh, well, that can't be possible because the MacBook Air is $1,000. And this is the model basically in this result. Uh, and then the MacBook Pro 16 inch is Apple's top of the line notebook. And that starts at 2400. So that can't be real. And then Steve Trotton Smith, uh, famed Apple developer, done a lot of cool stuff over the years, noticed um, that compared to the base Mac Pro, which is Apple's top tier offering uh, in, the, in the Mac lineup, that the MacBook Air with the M1 chip in this Geekbench result is only 556 points away on the multi-core score and beats it in the single core score. And just to be clear here, because I was watching this back and I was like, I don't know if I actually said this, the single core score on the new Apple M1 chip beats every other single core score ever in a Mac. So whether you're in the new Mac Pro with like 20 something cores or a four core Mac from a few years ago, like the single core score in the M1 chip is better than every other Mac ever made including Apple's most expensive $50,000 Mac Pro. The single core score is better. Obviously the multi-core is not there yet, but this is incredibly promising. So we've now gotten to a point where the new entry level MacBook Air is faster in nearly every way, not only when compared to Apple's 16 inch MacBook Pro, but it almost beats the Mac Pro, like the base, MacBook Air almost beats a Mac Pro. It's 550 points short. Now, obviously 500 points is a lot in this. And what I mean by this is that I'm very skeptical about this, but I'm not skeptical as if this is authentic or real. I just, um, I think it puts some other Mac computers in a weird spot because if you get the new cheapest Mac and it's beating your most expensive Mac laptop, you know how, you know, why, why do I have, where is he, where are you at? Okay, okay, maybe I'm underreacting. Guys, 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 It is faster than a 16-inch MacBook Pro, than a 13-inch MacBook Pro, than the old MacBook Air, than a Mac Mini, than some iMacs, and it nearly beats the base Mac Pro. Guys, 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 I, I don't know if I made this clear. The Apple M1 chip which is their starter chip, the base one, with eight cores, four normal, four high efficiency, beats almost every single Mac that they've ever made. And it's the base model. This is the one, again, without the fan. We might see crazier results when you put this in a Mac Mini with more space or a MacBook Pro that is also significantly thicker. I don't understand how they've done it. And I think that's why I'm reacting the way that I am. I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys can tell by my tone. Like I'm genuinely working, trying to crunch the numbers in my head to be like, oh, this is how, and this is the, but 
you can look at the results on Geekbench. And, and I, listen, I am not the one to say that Geekbench results equal everything because you know for a long time like android was having higher geekbench scores and i still felt that the overall experience was better but you're combining now mac os with one of the fastest consumer processors out there and you're just going to be throwing it in they've already got it in three new macs the macbook air the macbook pro and the mac mini hold on i know my problem i'm asking myself to work through this this is your guys's job what do you think about these results what do you think about the macbook air base scores the M1 in a fanless machine doing this well. Because what I'm looking at right now is that my $5,000 iMac that's behind me, my iMac Pro that I'm recording on in front of me, my 16 inch MacBook Pro are kind of defunct. That's how I'm feeling. Because I, I have these machines on order. Trust me, I will be testing them out. I will be seeing how this translates. But seeing these results initially is I would argue the best news that we've ever gotten for people that like using a Mac ever. Uh, like in the history, since 1984 when the Mac came out. If Apple can pull this off and beat almost every Mac they make on the base machine, what the hell do you think is going to happen when they do update the 16 inch MacBook Pro, when they put Apple Silicon in an iMac? And most importantly, when they then put it in the Mac Pro, the, the most expensive, the craziest, the highest power throughput GPU machine they have, I, I don't get it. But I have never been this f uh, as excited. <laughs> don't want to get demonetized. I've never been this excited for a Mac in my life. And as soon as I saw this and I started crunching the numbers, I said, I have to make a video because you know, Apple had the event, and honestly, it was really boring. It was not, it was my least favorite Apple event that they've held in probably years, to be completely honest. Um, transitions were great, it was beautiful. It's just, you know, it was just boring. It was just like, I kind of get why they spent the first half of the keynote talking about the processor. And uh, I don't know if they intentionally left out some hard numbers so that we would see this and then react and be like, whoa. But like, guys, this is so good. You know, yes, it puts existing Macs in a weird spot. But I mean, in a few years, this is going to pay off tenfold. Like, I don't think there's going to be another computer to buy than a Mac. That's, uh, that's how I'm feeling right now. How are you guys feeling? Let me know down below. I just had to share this news. Uh, cannot wait to see these machines in person. Can't wait to see more results. Can't wait to see more testing. Um, and uh, Apple, I, you know, if you ever would like, you know, me to take a look at a Mac early with the Apple M1 chip, listen, I'm always here. I, uh, I would love, I would love that. And I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you're doing well. Drop a like if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe for more. And uh, subscribe. Subscribe. Okay. Love you guys. See you in my next video. Peace.